Hello everyone. Good evening. Uh, so welcome to this talk where today I'll be talking about thrill. I'll be talking about what excites me, why, what motivates me to do what I am doing. And for that, I'll have to take you back a few years ago when I was a graduate student at University of Maryland College Park. Uh, this is around 2007 and 2008. When I stumbled upon this PhD problem, and I was basically asked to look into bubbles, bubbles that are formed when we boil, when we boil water or we boil any other fluid. And I was asked to understand this whole phenomenon of heat transfer. So if you look at any surface which you are heating, okay, and if you have a fluid on the top, you form bubbles. Bubbles are these pockets of thermal energy, okay? And once you form bubbles, since inside the bubbles you have vapor which is lighter than the outside medium they rise okay they rise due to buoyancy effect and this is a very efficient mode of heat transfer so if you compare this mode of heat transfer with any other mode of heat transfer for example something as simple as what we call forced convection which is blowing air on top of surface okay this mode of heat transfer which utilizes liquid to vapor phase change carries away heat much efficiently and it carries away this heat because of these wonderful entities bubbles. So my PhD problem was regarding bubbles and basically I was asked to look how do these bubbles transport heat and specifically what is the role of gravity because if you note here these bubbles are rising. This is a slow motion video that you see on the right side. These bubbles are rising away from the heated surface and that is the mode of heat transfer. They are carrying away the heat. The colder liquid is coming back. It's forming new bubbles, which is again rising. And this way you are going to cool a surface. Obviously boiling has a lot of applications. It's ubiquitous in our life, starting from something as simple as boiling water or cooking food to a nuclear power plant okay and all of that relies on this effect of gravity or buoyancy which is responsible for dissipating the heat much more efficiently than any other mode of heat transfer known to us so i was told that can you go back and see how would somebody do or boil liquid in space why in space and what is so wonderful about space what is so different about space space basically says that your gravity level G is zero. So where is that buoyancy effect going to come into play? So that was my PhD problem. So in order to understand how I attack that problem, let's talk about how can you simulate zero gravity? So obviously everybody knows the easiest way to simulate zero gravity is allow something to fall, free fall. Even when you jump and you are off your feet, until you hit the ground back again, you are in zero gravity. Obviously, it's only a fraction of second, which is not sufficient to do any experiments. So what is an alternate way of doing zero gravity experiment? Go to a flight, go to the cruising altitude, which is around 6,100 to 8,500 meters, around six to eight kilometers above the earth. And then have these flights do a free fall. You'll get sufficient time during that free fall and you can understand zero gravity. That is basically the mode that is used to even train astronauts. So I was lucky enough to do these zero gravity experiments using these parabolic flights, which work on a very simple principle. The flight usually cruises at an altitude of around six kilometers and then it takes off. Okay. So this is like basically take off at the ground where you pull it up. And once you pull it up, you turn the engine off when the flight is at 45 degrees. Why 45 degrees? Because we are told in high school physics that at 45 degrees, a parabola has maximum span as well as time. So once the engine is off, this flight does a free fall. And during this free fall period, the gravity level is nearly zero. That's when you can do experiments. That's when you can train your astronauts. And once again, the flight 
is the control is gained and you come back to higher gravity levels when you are pulling up that is during this initial period before the parabola or when you are pulling down that is after the zero gravity parabola the uh, gravity levels that you experience within these zero gravity flights is somewhere around 80 percent higher than the normal gravity level so that is to say that when i am under these conditions i will roughly be twice feeling twice as heavy as i usually do so having spoken about that let's see how did i really feel zero gravity this was my first parabola that i did way back in 2007 here is the video and you can also listen to the audio you will see this vertical line okay moving rightward which will basically tell you at what gravity level in orange you are and where on this path the flight is This is nice. Yeah. 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 So, added as you would have seen here, okay. Obviously, this was my first parabola, and I didn't have the liberty like other gentlemen out there. I was a graduate student and I had to do experiment. So, I was tied down also, as you can see, and there was a little bit of uh, I was also a little bit scared because obviously there is no ground underneath your feet, but this was really fun. So this is how I felt in zero gravity. How do, would you feel in zero gravity? But now let's see how would bubbles feel in zero gravity. So here again, the same chart, you will see what gravity levels we are in. And on the left, I'm having a simple experiment where you see bubbles from the side. And this surface on which we are boiling is transparent. So we also have a camera from the underneath and that you can see here. And initially we will start in the higher gravity region, something like earth gravity or 80% higher than earth gravity, where the mechanism is very similar to what we see on earth. And you will see these bubbles rising. And then you note when you traverse this path to zero gravity, that's when you switch off the gravity. Note what do these bubbles experience? So now we are transitioning to zero gravity. This is amazing. These bubbles, there were so many of them and they were going so fast that you couldn't even count them. That whole process happens maybe 40 times a second has completely stopped. Why has it stopped? Obviously because there is no buoyancy. There is no gravity. There is nothing like lighter or heavier in space. So now these bubbles, which are pockets of thermal energy, are not going anywhere. If they're not going anywhere, all of that advantage in terms of heat transfer that we use to get on Earth, we cannot get in space. So many things, okay, the way they work on Earth, you cannot do the same way in space. For example, something as simple as cooking. So this is what I really figured out in my uh, PhD. I identified the problem. I explained how bad is the heat transfer and then I moved on and went to MIT, started doing my postdoc there. I worked on a different problem, but this problem always puzzled me. So when I came back to IIT Patna, I again took up this problem. Okay. And the first thing I had to address was how do I mimic this zero gravity for bubbles, at least in some way even on earth gravity, because right from scratch, somebody is not go going to give me an opportunity to fly in. Uh, zero gravity. So we came up with a very simple solution. Instead of having a heater which is facing upward and a liquid on top of it such that bubbles are formed and they can rise, just invert everything. Have a heater facing downward, liquid is underneath this heater and then boil. And that is the phenomena you see on the right. A lot of bubbles nucleate. However, they don't have anywhere to go. The natural tendency is to rise up, but that's obstructed by this heated surface. So eventually what do they do? They all merge or coalesce together. That is a very simple phenomena. All of you have seen that if you have simple uh, bubbles, okay, I'm not talking about soap bubbles, 
okay and when they come close to each other they form a bigger bubble okay that's what is happening here obviously since you are pushing against the gravity so gravity is pushing these bubbles these bubbles are flattened out and not very spherical as you see here in zero gravity so having come up this roadblock of figuring out how to mimic zero gravity for bubbles on earth we started working on what kind of solutions we can come up in order to facilitate bubble departure from this surface and particularly on an inverted surface downward obviously one of the simple things we can do is to simply have a flow yes flow would take away that bubble will take away that heat however you have to understand that when you go to zero gravity okay energy is very expensive and whenever you have a flow you have a pump which consumes a lot of energy secondly pump also brings along with it vibrations those are also detrimental and third the whole system the thermal management system or the boiling system that you are going to develop okay will be bulky so obviously you want to avoid all of this and you want to come up with a solution which is completely passive okay which doesn't need energy so me and my student were thinking about it and one day an idea stuck to us and this was based on a simple observation where kids were playing with these soap bubbles so i'm sure all of you have seen the soap bubble experiment where you blow soap bubbles and there are a lot of bubbles that float around us and if you see two such bubbles they come close to each other but they generally don't have the tendency to combine or coalesce together to form a single bubble likewise what happens with pure water so we said okay why don't we simply add the chemical which is in the soap okay and that those are called surfactants which is basically a long hydrocarbon tail which is water hating hydrophobic and a head molecule which is water loving hydrophilic and the tendency of these surfactants is they adsorb at the interface of the bubble interface means the region which separates the vapor from the liquid so we said let's add this okay and the expectation was that they will not allow bubbles to coalesce for example all of us are very familiar if you take a soap solution and shake it you form foam what is foam foam is thousands and thousands of bubbles like i have shown here okay and the tendency for these bubbles is to not coalesce they do not come together they do not form a bigger bubble and a bigger bubble and then totally together a very big bubble so we said let's try boiling under these conditions downward facing heater which mimics our zero gravity and then forming solution okay and to our surprise not only did we avoid the formation of this big bubble okay complete dry heater which is bad for heat transfer we saw these bubbles foaming bubbles come down against gravity you have to understand the natural tendency since these bubbles are lighter medium is to rise up however despite that just because of addition of these chemicals these bubbles are coming down that was great that really excited us and that really served the purpose that we originally started for what was beautiful was that we are doing all of this completely passively so now it depends on your imagination how you can use this to facilitate the various processes that i have talked about and we have done something in that regard and this relates to cooling electronics in space so this is a common sight if you open your laptop or if you talk about your desktop computers near where you have your processor you have a heat sink and in between the heat sink and the laptop there is a thermal pad or heat spreader the purpose of this heat spreader is typically okay electronics these days dissipate a lot of heat okay and there are localized regions which are dissipating excessive heat so what you want to do is take this heat and spread it out over a larger area such that typical fan cooled heat sink or some other normal strategy can dissipate this heat out of your laptop computer or whatever electronic device you are talking about so these heat spreaders usually are copper or some other material but very recently it has been realized that the thermal loads on much of the electronics specifically spacecraft communication electronics has increased so much that you cannot work with thermal conductivity of copper and you need higher thermal conductivity material there are some solutions which rely on boiling however those solutions still are dependent on gravity if you operate them completely in zero gravity okay 
there is some deterioration in performance. So we said, we can solve this problem. How can we solve this problem? We can put the same solution in this narrow gap. So now this is not a copper block. This is a hollow chamber inside which we fill our solution. And then when we will have boiling, the natural tendency, whether this heater is facing upward or downward, for these bubbles is to rise up and not coalesce with each other. However, if I obstruct them on the top, what will be the tendency to spread out? And if they spread out, these are pockets of energy, they are going to spread out this thermal energy. So the whole hypothesis was that something like this hap will happen. And indeed, okay, we saw this. And what was very amazing that we did experiments with heater facing upward, vertical, and downward. And in all three cases, we saw very high heat transfer and completely independent of orientation. All results were exactly similar. So now this tells you that, okay, by sacrificing gravity and working for zero gravity, you have come up with a mechanism which without utilizing gravity can dissipate such high heat. Since gravity has a limit, its value is 9.8 meter per second square, right? So there's a limit to how much heat you can dissipate using boiling if you rely on gravity. However, you come if you come up with some strategy like this, which is dependent on certain chemicals that you are using. And then obviously you can innovate in terms of the properties of these chemicals. Maybe one day you can even breach this bar barrier even on earth gravity. So this is very thrilling and exciting to us. And we are eventually looking to break all these limits. But till date, we have only done experiments on earth gravity. Yes, we have shown that it is independent of gravity. And that kind of gives you a hint that this should work equally well in zero gravity because it's not dependent on gravity. But as the famous saying says, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So we are aware of that. Uh, we have collaborated with ISRO and we are going to flight this uh, device in the first uh, unmanned flight of the Indian space mission, human flight uh, mission, Gaganyaan. Gagan means, as all of us know, space and Yaan means flight. So our experiment has been selected to uh, test there and we will really get to know that whatever we have tested on Earth and we have proven that it's independent of gravity, does that really work? So now coming back to the whole topic, this is all exciting, this is all thrilling, but is this really my thrill? Are bubbles only my thrill or is zero gravity my thrill? So not really. The whole process okay, that we undertake in order to do this research, which starts from thinking about a problem, then trying to hypothesize, come up with a solution that this is my hypothesis, then researching that solution over days, months, and years, and most of the times failing so that you have to iterate again. This whole cyclic process, we keep doing. And one day, okay, one out of 100 times, you really come up with something new. And that innovation, okay, after all of this effort of thinking, hypothesizing, research, and iterating, is what really thrills me. So the point I'm trying to make here is this whole process of innovating by going through this exercise of thinking, hypothesizing, researching, and iterating. What is what makes my day-to-day -day life very fulfilling. I can say I'm living my life. I'm not leading, simply leading a life. I find some meaning to life. So with that, I would like to say in whatever you do, okay, please find your thrill. Please find what is the T for you, what is the H for you, what is your R, I, L and L. And if you do this, you will enjoy every day. You'll enjoy your work. With that, I will close my uh, talk. Thank you.